So what are we doing about extending habitat um, in the six rivers? As I mentioned yesterday, physical access, we talked about salmon ladders. Um, we talked about improving access a little bit through waterfalls. There's, there's some work to do there and uh, with, with the appropriate um, authorities to, to make sure we can improve access through waterfalls. But what we want to talk about now is relocation of spawning adults, uh, because we're using this to open up new areas of the river. Egg planting is also taking place, and we heard um, about egg planting uh, a little bit this morning in the morning session. We're not going to focus on that today. We want to focus on relocation of spawning adults. Um, first of all, salmon ladders, just a little bit more detail, because I thought it was quite interesting to show you the salmon ladders in the Six Rivers area and how they've uh, opened up the rivers in the area. So we've talked about the Selau River in a couple of presentations already, and uh, two ladders in the Selau River, the lower ladder, as we call it, the upper ladder, and they're at 7 and um, um, 36 kilometers upstream, respectively, installed in 68 and 2011, and together they've taken the river from seven kilometers length to about 50 kilometers length. So it just shows the value, I think, of those uh, salmon ladders. Obviously, issue of expense and so on. On the River Mio, as, uh, to, to use the short form, because I can never pronounce a full name properly, um, a ladder was installed there in 2017, and that doubled the length of the river. And, and in the Hofstra Sundadaus, on the Sundadaus side of this, a ladder was installed in 2005, and that improved the river from 11 to 31 kilometers. So providing greater access. There are, of course, issues with salmon ladders. They are technically difficult, they are expensive, and, and you need to be extremely cautious about how you develop these. That's the new salmon lander on the Mio. We're there for the opening of it. You can see the opening on the right. Uh, the sandbags were lifted. I think, um, I mean, Sebi, you can correct me, or maybe Danny in the audience, but the, within a very short space of opening that ladder, we had salmon going up the ladder to the upper part of the Mio for the yeah. first time. So very, very quickly after opening that ladder, the curious salmon were making, the curious adults were making the way upstream, which was, which was very interesting to, to watch. Um, other improvements, of course, are possible. I think this is an interesting uh, um, presentation of the rivers in the Six Rivers area. On this presentation of them, and this comes from the MFRI, we have height above sea level on the left hand, on the y-axis, and we have distance from sea on the x-axis. And you can see whilst, yes, all our rivers are in the same region, the, the actual gradients in the rivers vary considerably. And along these rivers, you can spot, for example, red dots, where we have waterfalls which are impassable today. And so this immediately guides you to understanding where it's maybe possible to continue that opening up of the rivers. And so what we're doing, and Steb is leading this, um, a survey to assess and prioritize those options. And the key issue, of course, is technical feasibility and cost. We do not want to intervene in this area you know, without the right uh, framework around it. And, uh, and also making sure that we have in place the measures to understand exactly what we've done and what we are doing and what we've done. So there are opportunities to open up the river, but a key component, as I said, is actually relocating adults in terms of developing river areas for us. Um, and that's what we're going to talk about next. And Stebby, over to you for that. I'll better hand you this, haven't I? <laughs> and you should have the slides on there. Yeah. Is that right? Thank you, Peter. Uh, yeah, hello, my name is Stefan, and I am one member of the Six Rivers team in the northeast corner of Iceland. Uh, I've been a guide on the Six Rivers for 15 years, but uh, nowadays I spend most of my time on the conservation work. One of the things we are doing in our conservation work is the radio tagging program, where we are relocating salmon, tagging them with radio tags, and tracking their movements. Uh, yeah, and now I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that program and what we have found out in the last couple of years. Uh, we know certain areas of the upper part of the rivers uh, are suitable for spawning and juvenile growth, but uh, we would like to see more salmon in those areas and 
increased spawning. Uh, at the end of the fishing season, we know roughly how many fish we have in our rivers based on numbers through our fish counters and catch data. And based on those numbers, we choose very carefully a limited number of fish that we catch, put in boxes, uh, and then relocate to those areas where we want to increase spawning. Fish are radio tagged using ATS tag tags and monitored every 10 days or so throughout the season and during the winter as well. The key questions we are trying to answer are, do the salmon remain in the new areas and do they spawn there? Where do they spawn exactly? How do they behave during the winter? And how many survive, migrate to sea? And how many of these then return? Up here, you can see where we are tagging the, uh, tagging the fish. We put the radio tags inside of the dorsal fin. They are, of course, put to sleep while we do this. Down here, is, you can see the boxes that we keep the fish in. And this is our trailer with, uh, that we, is full of water and oxygen. And down here, we are driving the, or relocating the fish to the upper part of the rivers. And on this picture, you can see this is up on the tributary. We keep the fish in the boxes for about a week so they get used to the new area. And then we release them with radio tags. OK, here, here you see a, ma a map of Wopnafjörður. And this blue line here is the uh, famous Sela River. Uh, And down here, where the yellow cross is, is the lower waterfall. This used to be the final stop for the salmon until 1968. And before 1968, Sela wasn't known to be a great salmon river. It didn't have a big run every year because of very limited spawning grounds. But in 1968, there was a salmon built in the lower waterfall, and an area opened up to the upper waterfall, which is about 19 kilometers of spawning ground. And slowly the, the number of fish in the river increased, and in about 10 years, the fishing was already up to around 1,000 fish, and has gone well above 2,000 fish in the past years. In 2011, uh, there was another similar ladder built in the upper waterfall, and then another 20 kilometers of river opened up for the salmon and a couple of tributaries as well. Slowly, the number of fish going up above the upper waterfall has been increasing, but it's happening very slowly. And we would like to see more fish up here and to use all those spawning grounds. So this has been our main focus in our conservation work for the last couple of years. We've both been releasing uh, relocating fish up here to Upper Cello and to the tributary Ruta. Here you can see the number of the radio tagged fish in the River Cello and its tributary Ruta. In 2020, uh, we, we tagged nine on Upper Cello and 11 on Ruta. In 21, there were 10 in Upper Cello and 20 in the tributary. And last year, 10 on Cello and 23 on the tributary Ruta. But last year, we decided to add to our program, and we decided to tag 20 fish in the lower part of Cello during the fishing season. And those fish were just caught, uh, put in boxes, and then tagged, and then let go. They were not relocated. We wanted to do that so we could uh, compare the behavior uh, to the fish we've been tagging and relocating at the end of the season, at the top of the river. We wanted, for example, to see if they would have higher survival rate and other things. Here we see two maps. Uh, they are both from the tributary Ruta, which is in 400 meters above sea level. Where the yellow cross is, is where we release the fish. This shows the location of the fish after five days. 
And you can see half of them have already gone up the river and about half down, uh, no more than two kilometers. And this is taken, uh, shows the location of the 20 days. And you can see they have spread out more and they're all already starting to pair up, and getting ready for spawning. This is one, this shows the location of one of the 20 fish we tagged during the fishing season in, on the lower cello. The fish was tagged here on the 12th of August. A day later, he was up here and he stayed here for three weeks. He actually got caught again during that time here. Then he swam up to this area here and stayed here for the rest of the season and got caught again. Uh, and probably did his part in spawning up here. Uh, so, yeah, so this is typical be, uh, behavior. But that also, it's quite interesting. Two out of those 20 fish actually got caught again, and both of them multiple times. So, shows us maybe they are, some of them are more aggressive than others. And then the fate of our tagged fish. Up here, you can see in uh, upper cello in 2020, we tagged nine fish, 14 died after spawning, two on the way down, and three migrated to sea. In 21, 10 were tagged, five died after spawning, three died on the way down, and two migrated to sea. And we are waiting for the results. We will see this now in May and June. In the tributary route, there were 11, Tag 2020, three died on the, after spawning, six on the way down, and two migrated to sea. 21, we tagged 20 fish, nine died after spawning, six on the way down, and five migrated to sea. And we tagged 23 this year. We've also been doing this on a, a river in the area called Vesterdalsá, uh, and that's showing us similar results. So, uh, our key findings, we are seeing positive results from relocating fish above 400 meters in the tributary route. Most fish stay near the relocation place after they are released and spawn there. We can relocate fish earlier in the autumn without it impacting their movements downstream. We've been doing this earlier and earlier every, every autumn. Fish are leaving the river soon after spawning. This was quite interesting. Uh, we saw that behavior from two fish out of those 20 we tagged on the lower cello, that in mid-November uh, they had left the river. And I think this is the first time in Iceland this behavior is confirmed. Uh, we can see exactly where the radio tagged fish spawn and th therefore do par counting and measure our progress. This is really important. Uh, and electrofishing confirms that new juvenile populations are developing in the areas and 10 to 30 percent survive the winter and make it back to sea. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks very much, Steve.